Today we're going to make a meal basically from all foraged uh, things, caught, hunted, uh, grown. Uh, we're going to do our own uh, horseradish mustard, this is what horseradish looks like. Uh, it's easy, easy to grow, it is hardy as hell. Uh, you just basically uh, plant a tuber and it spreads like this, it, more horseradish than you could ever eat. Um, you just dig it up and you extract the root, which in this case is a white root. Uh, we took some potatoes out here, I already threw the potato plants away, but we have all kinds of volunteer uh, potatoes coming up in our garden. Plus we have ones we planted, so we have way, way too many potatoes. So we got some new potatoes for dinner. Little guys, we're going to take these. We're going to take the horseradish um, over there in the herbs. We've got uh, chives. We're going to take chives. And then I've got a moose steak uh, we're going to do from the garlic. Uh, we've got garlic scapes. We made a garlic scape. Um, uh, what, what the heck is it called? Uh, a garlic scape pesto. That was the word. Pesto. All right, so we're getting ready for our horseradish mustard uh, recipe. This is the horseradish uh, root. It comes as a root I just dug out of the garden. We're going to wash that all up. Uh, then <laughs> you got to process the horseradish, and that's where the problem uh, starts. Uh, you need some sort of uh, food processor, grinder. Um, I wouldn't do it by hand. The reason being the fumes that come off the horseradish are so powerful, they will almost knock you out. I mean, seriously. Like It, it depends on your horseradish too, but ours tends to be very, very potent uh, when it's fresh. So it's almost, you have to stay away from it when you're grinding it because it's, it, the fumes are so powerful. Um, so you need some sort of food processor. Um, you're going to need a mortar and pestle. You're going to need uh, mustard seed. <clears throat> you're going to need some white vinegar. Uh, some, maybe a little bit of salt. I like to use garlic salt. So, and uh, basically uh, wash the uh, horseradish to start. All right. So you got your horseradish now. This was a, actually a pretty big root. Um, from one plant. This is how much we've got. This is quite a bit You get it to this kind of cleanliness. I would leave some little tops on you'll see why in a second um, This is what it looks like. It's um, a little woody kind of plant, but you're going to do basically now Clean off the skin and then we're going to process the uh, The root into the finest paste that we can get so uh, depending on your machine uh, I'm going to start with uh, this kind of blade here it's basically like a shredding blade and uh, if that doesn't uh, do it enough we'll put the secondary blade in the bottom and keep just keep blending it you just keep blending it basically so let's get all these cleaned up oh and you leave the little nub on the end here so that when you're cleaning the root you have something to hold on to we'll just chop that off later so now you have your roots uh, cleaned pretty good you want them as white as possible so your uh, horseradish looks uh, nice we're using um, uh, just regular mustard seed, so it's not going to be white, but uh, you can see you get the roots uh, this, this kind of clean. We're going to trim off all of the uh, tops, and then we're going to start to process. You'll probably have to cut some up to fit in the processors, too. Uh, your final root should look pretty much like this. I used a knife to cut these in half. Uh, the processor set up. I've got uh, a cutting blade at the bottom and then a uh, grinding blade at the top, so we'll see how that works. Um, <clears throat> keep in mind the fumes that come off this when you're grinding are immense so I know you'll probably open it up and have a sniff anyways it'll almost knock you on your ass um, depending on how powerful your um, roots are um, some of these can get very close to wasabi which is the green uh, green plant that's in the same family as the horseradish so um, you've been warned So just keep feeding it in, keep mulching and mulching and mulching. Uh, it's a very tough uh, woody kind of plant and you just got to keep mulching it down. And you just keep going and going. Feed it slow because it's a, it's a tough plant. And we'll have some little shards left over, don't worry about them. But that, that looks really good down there. Alright, so 
this has gone through the first uh, set of little mulching grinding. I'm going to puree it a little bit more with this kind of blade here. Um, and then I'm going to add in, I'm going to start uh, adding in vinegar, uh, just regular white vinegar, to turn it into sort of um, like a paste. So you want to just add vinegar until it gets uh, to the sort of consistency that you want. Uh, we use this on beef, or in this case, I'm making a moose uh, moose dinner tonight with all our own uh, potatoes, our own chives, our own moose, our own horseradish. So uh, that's what we're doing with it. But uh, it's really great with beef or anywhere you use um, mustard. So got your uh, vinegar in there. Just uh, let that blend up a little bit. You probably have to stop it and kind of let it push in a little bit. Add a little bit more vinegar to get it to a paste. This is a lot of horseradish, by the way, so you might not want to make this much. So that's all blended up. Now it's time to deal with the mustard. Um, you get a mortar and pestle. And I mean, the ratio of mustard to horseradish is all up to you. There's no, there's no rules. So I like this to be a horseradish mustard, not a mustard horseradish. So will it be far less um, mustard seed in this mix than um, horse. Put in your mustard seed. And if you've never used a mortar and pestle, you should probably get one. They've been around for probably thousands of years to crush seeds. I'm also going to add in some uh, garlic salt um, just to have a little bit of salinity in it. Um, and again, you can salt to taste. If you don't want too much salt, you don't have to. But uh, that's what we're going to do. Just keep doing this until it gets all ground down. You can see slowly that the uh, seed starts to break up and turn into basically basically a cracked kind of powder. So, And again, uh, however uh, much uh, grinding you want to do, uh, is uh, there's a lot of mustards with mustard seeds that are pretty whole. So you can, um, again, it's all up to you. I like mine uh, pretty crushed, so I'm still going to process these further. Okay, so I've been grinding for a few minutes and you can see it's now down to this. It's not totally like a dust, but there's some it's it's cracked basically and in and, and ground quite quite fine, but how fine you want it is totally up to you. So now we're gonna take the mustard cracked uh, mustard seed and we're gonna put it in with the um, horseradish that we've cut up and we're gonna blend and purify it some more. This also has the uh, salt and uh, the garlic salt in this case or you could just use salt. Um, and we're just gonna change the consistency of this um, by adding vinegar to get it to the right um, sort of paste that we want. When you open this lid, make sure you're standing back because the fumes, I am not kidding, are super potent. So uh, so there's the mustard uh, in there. Uh, we're just gonna get uh, push this down from the sides to get that back into the blades. And we're gonna have to add a little more vinegar. It's not, uh, but let's mix it up first just to see. can see the consistency I've got going here it's too it's too dry so we're gonna add uh, more and more vinegar until we get it to more of a, of a, a li not liquidy paste but more of a paste there we go so it's starting to emulsify a little bit now uh, I you can just keep blending it as long as you want you, you want to get all the woody kind of chunks out so you see all these kind of fibrous materials here you just want to keep blending it till basically all that's gone. Now, I'm sure a long time ago when they made this, they didn't blend it so well now. They didn't have the equipment. They probably accepted the, the, <laughs> the little woodiness of it. But uh, that's looking pretty good. And we'll just scrape down the sides in a second here. So this is kind of the consistency see, we've got now, which is nice. It's something you can um, uh, put on your... Uh, beef very nicely. We're going to mix it up a little bit more. Okay, so this has been mixing now maybe, uh, I don't know, two, three minutes. Been kind of pulsing it high and low. But uh, let's just have a look at the consistency here. And don't stick your nose in whatever you do. Let's just have a look here. Okay, that's looking really good now. Very nice. Very nice. Maybe a little too liquidy, but... Uh, 
that's okay. It'll absorb. It'll absorb into um, the horseradish as time goes on. That looks really nice. Let's get a little spoonful and just give it a and give it a taste here. Oh, that's too much. Let's just have a taste here. Ooh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh man. Oh, super hot. Yeah. Mm. Still a little, still a little woody. I'm going to pulse it a bit more. Mm. Mm. Good though. Very good. And uh, now we're just going to take it and put it into a jar. I'm not sure how much we made, but uh, <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, at least, uh, <laughs> at least a uh, half years of uh, horseradish for sure. Um, this isn't preserved in any way. You have to keep it refrigerated. So uh, it'll last at least a few months in the fridge easily uh, with the vinegar and uh, given that it's a, a spicy, uh, spicy thing with some salt in it. So uh, there we go. So that much root and mustard made that much horseradish mustard. Um, quite a bit. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, you know, I'll maybe go through this in a few months. I really like uh, hot, uh, hot toppings. So uh, you can use it on sandwiches or anywhere you use mustard or horseradish. So it's quite good. We're going to use it tonight on our uh, moose sirloin steak that uh, we uh, shot with Bo in the fall. And our chives and our potatoes, which should be very nice. So uh, thanks for watching.